before we begin the voice broadcast tutorial, from a high level, we have several products here at Callfire. Voice broadcast, SMS messaging, call tracking, IVRs, and the cloud call center. A voice broadcast is a product that sends out a pre-recorded message in a blast with some added features, including press one transfer, which we'll go over in a moment. If you don't already have an account with Callfire, the basic pricing for a voice broadcast is five cents per minute per connected call. So you're only billed for the duration of the calls that connect either to a live person or to an answering machine. If you're doing a high volume consistently, we have some monthly recurring plans that get you a better value. For example, the light plan gives you 2,500 minutes for $99. You only want to take advantage of one of the monthly plans if you're doing that volume consistently because it will automatically renew every month. Otherwise, you'd want to stick with the pay-as-you-go pricing, which again is five cents per minute per connected call. So to get started, once you create an account, you log in at callfire.com. As soon as you log in, you're brought to the broadcast dashboard. And from here, I can go ahead and hit new voice broadcast to get started creating a new one. If you're ever anywhere else within your account and you want to get to that point, all you would do is simply click broadcasts on the left side here in the blue control panel and that'll always take you back to this screen so we'll go ahead and do that to get started we'll click new voice broadcast creating a voice broadcast is a three-step process it's relatively straightforward by design the first step is the sound section this is where you're going to upload your sound files that are going to play to the recipients of the broadcast so we have a few different sections here. First is the live answer. And what that refers to is the instances where the person on the other line is a live person. When the phone call is answered live. This is the message I want to play to live people. So to upload my sound file here, I'm going to click select a message and then create a new message. There's three different ways you can go about creating a sound file, you can upload your own audio file, it just has to be WAV or MP3 format, less than three megabytes. You can record it via phone, which is what most people do. You just enter in your phone number here and hit send and the system will call your number. You answer the phone call and reads you a four digit verification code, which you then relay back into the system. Or excuse me, rather, it, it has you follow a prompt to record the message I just sent. Or lastly, you could use text to speech, which is simply type out your message. Now in my message, I'm going to include instructions to press one to transfer to me, which is one of the options that you have inherent in the voice broadcast feature or a product is a feature in this product. So I'm gonna say press one to transfer to me. I'm also going to give instructions to be added to my do not call list. Now, when you use a text to speech, you have a few different options for the voice. We'll use Beth. Let's see how this sounds here. This is Dane. Press 1 to transfer to me. Press 8 to be added to my do not call list. All right, so we'll say that's good. We'll hit accept, and there is the sound file that I just made. So because I'm doing a press 1 to transfer campaign, I'm going to next to transfer, click the icon to enable transfer. This is where I'm going to set up where I want those instances to transfer to. So I'm going to put my number here. So anyone who presses 
one, when they hear my message, to transfer to me will be transferred to this number. Next, I'm going to set the max transfers. Now, this is a setting that should be parallel with the amount of people you have available to answer the phone. So if I'm a one-man show, I'm the only one who's going to be able to answer the calls that are transferred. I'm going to set the max transfers to one. What that means is the system will stop sending out new calls as soon as someone transfers to me. When I'm done with the phone call that has been transferred to me, the system will then start kicking out the remaining calls in the list. The reason you want to set the max transfer is so that you don't get inundated with calls or miss any calls while you're speaking to someone who's transferred to you. You want to stop the campaign until you're done with that conversation and then continue on with the next calls. Lastly, with the transfer, I'm going to hit select a message. This is a confirmation that's played to the caller, letting them know that they're being transferred. You are now being transferred. All right, so we'll accept that. So next we have the answering machine. So I'm gonna hit select a message, create a new message. The reason I'm going to be using a different message for the answering machine is because when an answering machine gets the message, they're not going to be able to press 1 or press 8 when they hear the message on their answering machine. So you want to give a slightly different message there, just asking them to call you, something to that effect. So we'll put a And notice if you're using the text to speech, notice how if I'm writing out a number, I'm putting a space in between each number. That way the system will know to read the number one at a time. Two, one, three. I'll show you what I mean here. This is Dane. Call me at two one three two two one two two eight nine. All right. So we'll hit accept there. And lastly, we have our do not call. We'll leave the digit at eight. Hit select a message. And this is similar to a transfer in that it's a confirmation to the caller. That they've been added to the do not call list. You have now been added to our do not call list. All right, so we'll hit accept here. So you'll notice that every option that I have enabled has a corresponding sound file. If you have a, a, a section here enabled and you don't have a corresponding sound file, it won't let you continue until you do so. So you want to make sure that anything that's green here has a sound file underneath it. Once you're done, you'll just hit next. We'll take you to the second portion of the setup process where you'll upload the list of contacts you want to send the broadcast to. So the most common way to do this is to upload a list. You can also choose an existing list. You can add a single contact, same idea, choosing from contacts already saved onto your account. Or you can filter from a previous campaign. I have a list here that I already have ready. I'll show you what it looks like. This is just a standard list. It has to be Excel or CSV format, less than 10 megabytes. The only real other thing to be cognizant of is that all the phone numbers have to be in one column on your list. The system will only dial out of one column. So all phone numbers that you want dialed, make sure they're in one column there. So once your list is ready, you'll hit upload list. Give it a name. Then you're going to choose it from your files in your computer. And hit continue. 
Now, anytime you upload a list, Callfire is going to validate the list. And what the system's doing is it's checking it for duplicates, checking it for invalid numbers. It's going to run it against your existing contacts to see if you already have these contacts uploaded. The first step it'll have you do is manually name the columns. So you hit manually name and hit continue. And all you're doing here is ensuring that the system is pointed to dial out of the correct column. So any type of number that you're dialing, whether it be work phone, mobile phone, business phone, should be in one column and you should name that column home phone, irrespective of what type of number that is. All you're doing here is pointing the system to dial out of this column by naming it home phone, even if it's a mobile phone or business phone. What I'm, what I'm doing is telling the system to dial out of this column here. We can leave the rest default. We'll hit continue. So next is telling me that I have three numbers associated with existing contacts. So that means that I've uploaded these contacts in a previous campaign. That's fine. I'll just hit create new and hit continue. So again, it'll also check for invalid numbers or duplicates. I don't have any in this list, but if you do in yours, it'll ask you what you want to do with those. And once you're through that, you'll hit agree to the terms, continue, and then complete upload. So now that we've completed that, we see our list here. We'll hit next. This is the settings portion, the last portion of the campaign creation. This is where we're going to give the broadcast a name. We'll just put tutorial here. Next, we're going to set the caller ID. This is the caller ID that the recipients of the call are going to see the call is coming from. So if this is your first time using the system, or if you're using a new number, Callfire will first verify ownership of that number. And the way that that works is the system will call your phone, you answer the phone call, and it reads you a four-digit verification code. Once you do that process, once you verify ownership of the number, you can use it for any subsequent campaigns going forward. You don't have to verify ownership of it every time. You just have to do it the initial time and the system will then save it. So I've already verified ownership of this number. So I'm gonna use that as my caller ID. Next, I'll set my local time dialing restrictions. This is just a setting pointing the system to ensure that it doesn't dial before or after a certain time. So you don't call people too early or too late. Next, we'll set our max simultaneous calls. Now, this is the speed, so to speak, of the campaign. This is how fast it's going to go out. If you're doing a press one to transfer campaign, you'd want to consider lowering this substantially. Reason being, the default speed is 100 calls. What that means is it will send out 100 calls at a time, and as soon as a line opens up, it'll fill it up so that 100 lines are always being used until the campaign is completed. If you're doing a press one to transfer and you send out 100 calls at a time, let's say five people out of that 100 calls want to transfer to you. Even though your max transfer is set to one, out of the 100 calls that go out, five people have indicated they want to transfer. The campaign will stop once it recognizes that someone wants to transfer, but the other calls have already gone out and those people have already attempted to transfer to you. So point being, if the campaign is going out too fast, you risk missing some calls. So I'm going to say for my campaign, because I only have one person, I'll put it at 10. That way the system will only send out 10 calls at a time. It's really reducing my risk of missing any calls. Next, I have my automatic retry. I'll put busy or no answer. So when I get a busy signal or a no answer, I'm pointing the system to call that person again 60 minutes later. I'm going to leave answering machine unchecked because I'm leaving a message on answering machines. If I check answering machine on automatic retry, it's going to leave a message every time it gets an answering machine and then retry it and leave another message however many times I have it retry. So I'm going to leave that blank 
or unchecked rather, so that I don't leave multiple messages for people. Next we have our schedule. I can click schedule for later here. And what that'll give me the option to do is run the campaign at a later date or time. So I can change that here. I can use an advanced scheduling tool. If I have a very large campaign, this will allow me to do by the days that I check and within a time zone or time frame rather. Here. Okay, remove there. Or what I can do is hit start immediately. If I hit start immediately and finalize, it'll run right away. Let's say I don't want it to start right now. I can leave that unchecked and click finalize. And that'll just finalize the creation process of the campaign and then I can go back to my dashboard by hitting view campaign dashboard and we can see that campaign I just created is now in a stopped position so I can then go back into my account log in check the box next to it hit this edit and hit start and that'll put the campaign in a running state I can also click the name and hit the drop down here so now that it's in a running state, it's going to send those calls out. My overview doesn't have many figures yet because the campaign is just getting started. I can go to my call records. It'll show me a list of the numbers that I'm calling here. I can see they're in progress. I can hit visualize. gives me a heat map. I can go to my contacts list. It'll show me a list of all the contacts that I have associated with this campaign. Also allow me to add more contacts. I can adjust my settings and my sounds here after the fact too, if I want to change anything. So we'll give this a few more moments to finish up. We can see here that the progress on the dashboard is now finished. 100%, three of three completed. I'll click the name again to see any stats. We'll give that a few more moments to update. The call records gives the system status. Now that it's finished, I can see I have a live answer and two answering machines. To the right of each record, I can go ahead and hit the details. If I needed a report of the call records, I could hit export call details. And that's going to give me a CSV file of everything that occurred on the campaign. Close that out. So in terms of getting more help, we always have support here from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday, and 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time on Saturdays by calling this number, 1-877-897-3473. You can also email us, support at callfire.com, or we can hit us up on live chat. We have chat from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday. So that'll conclude the voice broadcast tutorial for today. We hope that you found that helpful and enjoy the rest of your day.